And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush? Exodus 3 verse 2. The desert sun beat down mercilessly as Moses tended his flock, unaware that his life was about to change forever. Suddenly, an extraordinary sight caught his eye, a bush engulfed in flames, yet miraculously unburned. As Moses approached this mystifying phenomenon, a voice called out to him, setting in motion a chain of events that would shape the course of history. Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we delve into the captivating realm of supernatural encounters. If you're intrigued by this tale, be sure to check out our other videos and join our community of seekers and believers. Now, let's unravel the mystery of the burning bush and its profound implications. Chapter 1, The Unlikely Prophet. Moses, once a prince of Egypt, now found himself a humble shepherd in the land of Midian. Exiled from his homeland after an act of defiance against injustice, he had resigned himself to a life of obscurity. Little did he know that the divine had other plans for him. As he led his father-in-law's flock to the far side of the desert, Moses came to Horeb, known as the Mountain of God. It was here, in this desolate landscape, that the extraordinary would occur. What do you think was going through Moses' mind as he first glimpsed the burning bush? Share your thoughts in the chat below. The sight before him defied logic, a bush consumed by fire, yet not reduced to ashes. Curiosity piqued, Moses decided to investigate this strange phenomenon. As he drew near, a voice called out to him from within the flames, Moses. Moses. Startled, he replied, Here I am. The voice continued, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. With trembling hands, Moses removed his sandals, sensing that he was in the presence of something far greater than himself. Chapter 2, The Divine Commission. The voice from the bush revealed itself to be none other than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses, overcome with awe and fear, hid his face, unable to look upon the divine presence. But God had a purpose for this encounter, a mission that would change the course of history. I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt, the voice declared. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. The compassion in these words was palpable, reflecting a deity who was not distant and aloof, but intimately aware of human suffering. God continued, revealing his plan to Moses, so I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The promise of deliverance must have stirred something deep within Moses' heart, rekindling memories of his own people's plight. But then came the words that would change everything, so now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people the Israelites out of Egypt? Can you imagine the shock Moses must have felt at this moment? How would you react if you were suddenly tasked with such a monumental responsibility? Share your thoughts in the comments. Chapter 3, Doubts and Reassurances. Moses, understandably, was filled with doubt and hesitation. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He asked. It's a question many of us might ask when faced with a daunting task, who am I to take on such a responsibility? God's response was both reassuring and challenging, I will be with you. These simple words carried immense weight, promising divine support and guidance throughout the journey ahead. But for Moses, the doubts persisted. Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Moses asked. It was a valid concern. How could he convince his people that he truly spoke for the God of their ancestors? The answer he received was profound, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. This enigmatic name, often translated as Yahweh, would become central to the Israelite understanding of God, a being beyond full human comprehension, yet intimately involved in human affairs. What do you think this name reveals about the nature of God? How might it have impacted Moses and the Israelites? Let's discuss in the comments below. Chapter 4, Signs and Wonders. Recognizing Moses' continued hesitation, God provided him with three miraculous signs to convince both the Israelites and Pharaoh of his divine mandate. First, Moses' staff turned into a snake when thrown on the ground, returning to its original form when he grasped it. Next, his hand became leprous when placed inside his cloak, only to be restored when he repeated the action. Finally, God promised that water from the Nile would turn to blood when poured on dry ground. These signs were not mere parlor tricks, but powerful demonstrations of God's authority over nature and even life itself. They were meant to leave no doubt in anyone's mind that Moses spoke with divine authority. But even with these assurances, Moses still faltered. Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue, Moses protested. It's a relatable moment, how often do we let our perceived inadequacies hold us back from pursuing our calling? 
God's response was both a rebuke and an encouragement, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Chapter 5, The Reluctant Hero Despite all the reassurances and miraculous signs, Moses made one final plea, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. It's a moment of raw honesty that many of us can relate to. Even when presented with a clear calling, the weight of responsibility can feel overwhelming. God's anger burned against Moses for his continued reluctance, yet his patience prevailed. He provided Moses with a partner in this monumental task, his brother Aaron, who was known for his eloquence. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him, God declared. With this final provision, Moses finally acquiesced to the divine calling. He returned to his father-in-law Jethro, requesting permission to return to Egypt. The stage was set for one of the most dramatic confrontations in biblical history. As we reflect on Moses' journey from shepherd to prophet, what lessons can we draw for our own lives? How do we balance our doubts and insecurities with the call to step out in faith? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Chapter 6, The Burning Bush Legacy The encounter at the burning bush marked a turning point not just for Moses, but for the entire Israelite nation. It set in motion a series of events that would lead to the Exodus, the giving of the Ten Commandments, and the establishment of Israel as a nation. But beyond its historical significance, the burning bush story continues to resonate with people of faith today. It speaks to the reality of divine encounters, the call to serve a purpose greater than ourselves, and the promise of God's presence in the face of daunting challenges. The image of the bush that burns but is not consumed has become a powerful symbol of God's nature, ever-present, all-consuming, yet not destructive. It reminds us that encounters with the divine may come in unexpected ways and in unlikely places. Moreover, Moses' journey from reluctant shepherd to leader of a nation serves as an encouragement to all who feel inadequate for the tasks before them. It reminds us that God often chooses the unlikely, equipping them with what they need to fulfill their calling. As we conclude our exploration of this pivotal moment in biblical history, let's consider, how might we be more attuned to the burning bushes in our own lives? What calling might we be resisting out of fear or feelings of inadequacy? And how can we, like Moses, step out in faith despite our doubts? The story of the burning bush invites us to see the extraordinary in the ordinary, to listen for the divine call in the midst of our daily routines, and to trust that if God calls us to a task, He will also equip us for it. Thank you for joining us on this journey through one of the most iconic stories in religious history. If you found this exploration enlightening, we invite you to like, share, and subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more deep dives into the mysteries of faith and the supernatural. Until next time, may you remain open to the burning bushes in your own life, ready to hear the call that might just change everything. This is Celestial Chronicles, signing off.